right, and welcome and good evening, everyone. This is John Thompson. I'm going to be your GM tonight, but I'm also, if you're looking at our layout tonight, you're going to see it's a little bit different. We actually are doing a big game pulling together a lot of people for what is essentially the closing of Growing Shadows Season 2, and also, I guess you could say, a stinger for what is coming out in Growing Shadows Season 3. Uh, which will be starting in about two months or so. But that said, tonight I am actually going to be playing a character as I help present a story. And uh, tonight I will be playing, obviously, if you're looking at the screen, Hajime Abe. I am the lead spy master that has appeared in several games uh, that have been told. This, is, this has been uh, three, almost four years in the making. Uh, between two podcasts and an actual play series that is now wrapping up its second season. Uh, I, just, I am blown away by the opportunity to have this story told, the players that I've had come back. Uh, we actually have quite a few guests today on the show. Obviously, we have 10 people on screen. Uh, so uh, that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and present my character and uh, also kind of give an idea of what you are seeing. So uh, Ajime Abe is a member of the Hidden Strands. He is kind of one of those people that does things behind the scenes and keeps his ear to the ground. Operates several different groups of spies and networks all throughout the empire. And they all report back to a singular location, which has been referred to as the Wooden Dojo. Uh, that is kind of his headquarters where he operates from. Uh, he is tall, probably around uh, six feet three or so, kind of towering over people, has kind of a very angry and mean demeanor to his face, uh, shaved uh, bald head, and uh, dresses somewhat officially. Uh, but most people really don't know much about him other than the positions that he holds. A lot of people have never really seen him leaving the building. Uh, but so... That is him. Tonight, I'm going to uh, introduce a few guests and uh, allow them also to say who their character is, what they look like, and where their character is from. Uh, I'm actually going to start with uh, two of our guests that I'm very honored to have here tonight. Uh, Aloy, if you are up for it, uh, we actually have Aloy Lasanta. He is uh, the creator of Ninja Crusade and has come on for this episode. So Aloy, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me back on. I, I've been on here a couple of times, so always excited to come on with you, John. Thank you. So tell us about your character tonight and uh, what, 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 you know, where you're from. So it's interesting that you are playing a, a member of the Hidden Strands, because so am I. I'm actually playing a Saito Ganryu. Uh, he is from uh, the book uh, Truth and Lies, uh, which is the clan book for the Hidden Strands. Uh, he, uh, you'll notice his last name is Asaito, which actually means he is one of the pure bloods, one of the dragon blooded of the clan, uh, meaning he descends directly from the first ninja. Uh, he has never been defeated in battle, uh, and he is kind of the one that you send out when you need, uh, when you need something handled. That's who, that's who you send out. You send him out. Um, he also, strangely, uh, your description of your character was a little bit kind of like mine. Uh, very tall, super muscular. Uh, he has a bald head, but he's got uh, tattoos all over his head. So uh, slightly different. And he's very intimidating just by like his, his kind of his nature. Uh, just he has deep, booming voice, you know, big inhuman stature. Uh, and, uh, and his threads... Um, his threads that he have uh, that he has uh, wrapped around his uh, gauntlets are uh, like pure black. Like they're probably the first thing anybody would notice is that his strands are black, uh, and they don't look like regular strands. All right, awesome. Well, uh, thank you, Aloy. So uh, we also have another guest who is uh, was part of the. <sighs> the foundations i guess you could say with uh, ninja crusade uh she was the editor for the book and is in my opinion uh should be pretty much well known as an editor in the industry of tabletop rpg gaming 
Uh, Carol Darno, uh, it's also an honor to have you here tonight. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so please you. tell us about your character. Okay, well, um, she's pretty bloodthirsty. <laughs> um, her name is Kihara Yasu, and she is from, uh, I did take her from page 95 of Empire's Reign, uh, which is, I believe, the second book to come out, The Ninja Crusade. And um, she's a bit of a troublemaker. She won't start a fight, but she sure as heck will finish it. <laughs> um, she was trying to prove herself to her family. Her family disagreed, but she joined the uh, Empire's army anyway. Um, so she decided that she would prove herself that way. And then she found out she had a knack for um, taming celestial animals. She didn't much care about their freedom, so she got whatever she could, even a celestial monkey. Um, so that was, but she decided that uh, she became disillusioned with the prospect of actually ever proving herself. So she decided she'd just leave. <laughs> so <laughs> um, there was no one to stop her, at least no one still standing. So she went off into and, and fled, and uh, they have been apparently chasing her. But some ninjas <laughs> found her because she was uh, she was not careful one night. She, they accepted her, so she is technically a defector with the Lotus Coalition. All right. <laughs> well, awesome, and again, it is an honor to have you here tonight with us. Yeah. Uh, so going back in time to uh, our original podcast, to the very first one we have, we have a character from that, from uh, Seriously Let's Play, uh, Kevin. So Kevin, if you want to go ahead and toss out an introduction as well. Sure. Uh, I'm playing Manabe Saburo. Uh, he's a member of the Recoiling Serpents. Uh, so, you know, maybe not uh, on great terms with everybody right now but um he hasn't uh, gone in with onimaru he's he's sticking with the uh traditional or well the you know main body of the recoiling serpents um and uh yeah he's uh he's kind of small he's probably like five foot five or so he's got dark hair that's kept pretty short um dresses mostly in like gray uh pretty tight fitting clothing he's he's really lithe and and sort of uh nimble and um yeah he uh i, I noticed carol said that she wouldn't start a fight uh saburo absolutely will start a fight um someone's got so, you uh, <laughs> yeah. uh yeah he's he's pretty uh hot-headed he's um yeah, not a nice guy. He some of the stuff that he's seen has softened him a little bit. Uh the the raid on uh Yanuma, I think it is. Yeah. Uh that he was part of he uh which he'll I'll probably be talking about tonight. Um some things that happened there uh made him, you know, reassess his life a little bit. So yeah, that's Saburo. Awesome. All right. Uh and next up for the uh wooden dojo podcast which was our second podcast that we've done in this plot line we actually have two characters from that tonight and players that uh one of which you definitely know but uh we actually have david tonight and he's also from the illuminated page uh actual play which is a call of cthulhu masking yarlathotep uh actual play going but so uh david uh your character, uh, the character who I, whose name I messed up the most during the broadcast thereof. Yeah, so, I'm playing Kawakami Sanosuke. And I think John always said it, uh, Sanosuke. <laughs> yeah, so Sanosuke. Um, he is a virtuous body gardener. Um, he was uh, a war orphan and um, conscripted into the Imperial Army from a young age and was basically raised and trained to be a manslayer for the Imperials. Um, and one day 
he had an event that happened uh, where he was supposed to be doing his job that um, sort of just changed his life. And he killed his entire unit and ran away with some kids that he was ordered to kill. Um, he was later caught and put into prison uh, by the Empire. Um, he was held in prison and tortured for a long time um, until uh, a group of ninja came to uh, free some prisoners of the members of theirs that were held in there were with him. And um, he went with them and then became one of them. And then now fights with the ninja trying to uh, sort of undo all the stuff he did. Now, tonight, uh, we also do have another member from that podcast, but you would know her better from Growing Shadows, and that is Roxy. Hello, hello. Uh, I am Roxanne Thompson, and yes, you know me from Growing Shadows. Uh, I will not be playing that character tonight. I am playing uh, Hayakawa Akami, and uh, I am an Imperial Engineer that has defected and uh, joined with a group of ninja after realizing um, pretty much uh, as I was searching for information about my family, I realized that uh, the empire had manipulated me and given me some um, false information about my family. And uh, I decided that I could be useful as essentially a double agent of sorts. Um, so yes, I come with knowledge of, you know, the black powder, uh, company or I think or black smoke, I think is what they are. And, um, you know, Imperial military forces and things like that. So that's me. All right. Now, uh, we do have four. Uh, Roxy obviously plays with Growing Shadows, but she is going to be uh, playing this character. We have four other players who are from Growing Shadows tonight, uh, which everybody is the one you know much more familiar with. So uh, going down the line, uh, I'm going to go ahead and have uh, let's go ahead and have Sammy. Sammy, if you want to introduce your character. Hello, uh, I'm Sammy. Uh, I'm playing uh, Takumi Izanagi. I am also a virtuous body gardener. Uh, I am a single child living, uh, uh, living with his mother, kind of as uh, Dan Ketsu's resident um, starving artists slash uh, handy people. Um, I, I got trained in Danketsu and, uh, have been running with, uh, the rest of the crew, uh, essentially on a journey to become full ninja. Uh, so I operate as, uh, a scout and an archer, um, who has a penchant for getting into awkward situations because of said skill set. Awesome. Uh, next in line, we actually have uh, coming up, we have Tuan. So Tuan, if you could go ahead and give an introduction. Hey, everyone. My name is uh, Tuan. I will be playing Guy, the resident uh, bookworm of the group. Um, I don't do much fighting. I make a lot of traps and I run away a lot, oftentimes screaming. So next up, we have uh, Steven. So Steve, if you want to go ahead and give an introduction for your character. I'm Steven. I play Chetsuo Kawasaki. Most people call him Chet. Uh, he is a disciple of the Enlightened. He trained to be a ninja, but decided to forego actually becoming a ninja, finding his own path in life, uh, and was trained by a deserter from the Enlightened. In such, he has become a monk, uh, he has also never lost a fight, although he has probably had less fights than Eloy's character. <laughs> but he probably. has thrown a celestial cat through a tree, which is fun. That was Truth. a good fight. I threw two celestial cats through a tree. No! <laughs> One with each hand. <laughs> And uh, 
finally, last but definitely not least, uh, because she is also the resident artist for Growing Shadows. Uh, a lot of the art that you see, uh, the posters and everything, and pretty much a lot of the art that you're going to see on our channel. Uh, we're so privileged, honestly, because uh, you create a lot of what people see for what the show is. Uh, Justine, if you could give your character introduction. Yeah, I'm Justine, and I play Ronto and her dog Camu. We are a part of the um, the. Oh no, my brain skipped. Uh, Pack of the Black Moon. I was, I had it in my head, and it left, and then it came back. So yeah, we are a part of the Bla uh, Pack of the Black Moon, and uh, Ronto is probably uh, maybe like pretty close to Guy in that we are the smallest in height, um, but she is the oldest of the group. Uh, she is kind of a ragged, shrimpy, uh, always wears kind of like a straw cloak and straw hat and just kind of keeps herself hidden. Uh, but is also, uh, like Takumi, a scout and also a good bit of muscle for close range combat. And so far, her um, her favorite method has just been to grab sorts of improvised weapons and bonk really hard. It's what we've learned she's very good at. Um, she doesn't have a lot of friends, but she's sort of very quietly bonded to this young group of ninjas. And Camu is a very good boy. Truth. Yes, the goodest. Mm -hmm. So, uh, these are our players for the night. We are pulling together, like I said, three to four years of plotline that's been happening with the game uh, to podcast the actual play. Everything has been building towards this moment as we get ready for season three to be coming. So, with that said, uh, this is a meeting at the Wooden Dojo, and uh, Jimmy Abe has called together the clans. Uh, this is a, what I would liken to being the gathering of the fleet uh, from Return of Jedi. Everybody uh, that could be here, that is a member of the Lotus Coalition that had an opportunity to be here, is here. So we're talking about, at your characters are all here. And at the same time, looking around the room, you're seeing the various uh, leaders and elders of the clan. And in the uh, in the case of even the uh, virtuous body gardeners, I believe your clan founder is present. So uh, all of you are here in this moment, looking around the room and uh, being held and Denketsu. Also, uh, anyone, any of the ninja are that are here, and some of the villagers are packed around this building to overhear what is going on. And Jimmy Abe basically stands up before the entire group and says, Welcome, one and all, tonight to this gathering. There has been a lot going on, and honestly, this meeting has definitely become necessary. I am the spy master, but there are things that even at this point, threads that are being pulled, things being seen, actions across the empire that are going to have an effect right here. And as such, it is necessary for the Lotus Coalition's leaders to be here, because this will not be a decision I can make. This all comes down to a series of events that has happened, and I've had various teams of mine now gather so that we can present as well as I can what exactly is happening. There are, like I said, so much going on. I will need to uh, build the case for everyone and let everyone see what has happened. But that starts with the, uh, my team that I sent out originally. I had heard about some sort of meeting that was happening. Various groups moving across the land to parts of the Empire that had been left to rot. Uh, an unusual thing altogether, but it became necessary for me to send someone to uh, at least investigate what was happening. Uh, for that reason, I would like to ask uh, Manabe Saburo Manabe, if you will please step forward and 
tell us exactly what it was that you came across during your investigation. Yes. We, um, we were sent to investigate a meeting. Um, we did not know exactly who was going to be there. We were a bit surprised to find uh, Sakamoto Eiko, uh, high-ranking noble, and uh, some other followers meeting to discuss some sort of um, subterfuge against the Emperor. And um, we extracted Sakamoto Eiko. Um, the Imperial Army had been alerted. They were coming in. Um, we got her out and her immediate entourage with the other members fleeing the scene. And uh, it was only after that that we learned that Sakamoto Eiko had been poisoned. Um, only once she was back in Donketsu, I believe, we learned she was poisoned. This meeting that you observed, uh, do you remember who else was there that day? Some of the other leaders... I've written down on a piece of paper. Uh, some of the other leaders who were there were uh, Fujita Fumeo, Nakaba Shuji, Igarashi Juro, and Tetsuya. Um... The reason I present this to everyone is something that I'm not certain any of us are surprised to find, and that is a rebellion outside of the Ninja Crusade is forming. Uh, Sakamoto Eiko is the, the Emperor's wife who passed, or I should say was assassinated. This is her sister. And she is forming a rebellion. This is the information that we have now come across and we're acting on. Uh, she was brought back here to Danketsu, where she was treated for the poison. And at this point, we believe that we are, as a result, now going to be uh, allied with them. Which, quite frankly, is good for us because I'd rather have any allies we can get against the Empire. Especially if it's amongst the people. That said, though, there was something else going on. Uh, and this becomes another point. Uh, Saburo, you were involved in what has now been colloquially called the assassination at Yanoma, yes? Yes, I was. What do you remember? Onimaru gathered a large contingent of recoiling serpents and presented evidence that the um, there was a family of uh, nobles traveling to the capital, if I'm not mistaken. And... Um, they uh, they were they were with us but then they were they were switching their allegiance to the empire and Onimaru uh, said that we needed to kill them because of that uh, I was on board with that it seemed like sound logic to me but uh, when we got there it was uh, was not what Onimaru made it out to be. The uh, family was, um, well, massacred. Uh, I killed some of them myself. And um, he, um, he took some sort of golden seal from them. Uh, we were not sure what that was for, or I was not sure what that was for at the time. And, um, his, uh, the, the nobleman seemed to have no idea 
what was going on. This attack seemed to come completely out of the blue. Um, and uh, there was a there was a child with them that we killed, and um, I I couldn't I couldn't get behind that. I I broke with Onimaru there, and um, I buried the child as was only fitting. I've uh, been fighting the Serpent War ever since, and um, yes, I've, I've uh, come back here for this meeting, but uh, uh, only just, just. And this is an important point, because so the Hano family that was slaughtered, it turns out that the evidence presented was falsified by Onimaru. So he had a slaughter someone that was our ally. And at the same time, it was the event that kicked off the Serpent War. Under Crown Prince Kano, the Imperial Army surrounded their province, and between Onimaru's forces and the old serpents fighting back and forth and then also fighting the Empire, this is where we find ourselves on that border now. I will say that we also do have proof in the way of a survivor. And uh, so my character will have, uh, it, it is a member of the Recoiling Serpents that steps out, uh, Mai, uh, who Kevin, your character, would recognize as the woman from the raid. And she is escorting the child that you thought was killed. Uh, Saburo, he, he, his, his face sort of freezes in a, like, just a mask, but he, he doesn't show, like, he was, you know, sort of serious and intense beforehand, and now he's just, like, blank. On behalf of the old serpent, he had sent along Mai, who is actually his daughter, and she made sure that this child survived. And it is through her that we have learned much of the information about the Hanu family and what has happened since. And he, he looks over at your character and this kind of gives a nod, an understanding nod of what has happened. But this is not where this story ends because something else was about to happen. And I wish to have Sunosuke if you will please step forward and tell me about what it is that your team saw and what you were doing. Hello, everyone. The golden seal that you mentioned earlier actually is what we were tracking down. There was a plot during the festival to lure multiple members of the noble family to this festival. Uh, and they were given golden seals uh, with their invitations. Certain ones were marked, and those that had those marked seals were going to be eliminated at this festival. Um, there was actually two things happening at that time. The Empire had an executioner, Ito the Ogre, you may have heard of him. Um, they had him there, and he was going to be unleashed to kill these nobles. We encountered him along with a puppet master of some kind um, outside of the city and eliminated him before he could be used as a tool of the Empire. Uh, at the same time, uh, during an event, monumentous event, legendary duel between two Grand Master Swordsmen uh, that was going to lure many people in to watch. There was an estranged group of recoiling serpents that had been smuggling explosives into the city. And they had intended to set them off during the festival, killing as many people as they could, both enemies and allies of the Empire as well, um, just to do as much damage as they possibly could. I believe Akeme has more information that she can share. Indeed. Uh... If, uh, Hayakawa Kemi, if you could share 
what you found. Of course. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I have served with the Empire for many, many years. Under, under the direction of uh, Captain Harada. And it was during this time as we investigated, um, Sonosuke and our, our team and I uh, investigated what was happening around the Empire. We discovered that some uh, engineers were using, um, or were trying to, and, and essentially they were poisoning entire villages to um, reduce resistance to the Empire and what they were doing. Um, and we discovered that when we fought with the Ogre and we learned about um, so many horrible and bizarre clockworking, uh, clockwork uh, machines and traps um, that were going to be used to control the, the crowd uh, at, this, at this festival, um, I, I believe we we hindered that though, thankfully. Um, but there is a massive distribution of of black powder uh, going out to to other villages. I assume for the occupation that is occurring uh, that we've gotten word of. But um, the the empire is not going to go quietly. Indeed. And part of this that I bring up is the mention of the gold seal from the assassination at Yanama. It appears that this group that was going to set off the explosions in the capital city were from Onimaru's group. And that this was their plan all along, as well as setting off the Serpent War. He has I, the intent to do as much destruction as possible. And obviously we find ourselves in quite a horrible situation I have another team here today they do they do look young I will admit but please hear them out they have passed their training and they are actual members of the Lotus Coalition so uh, please allow them this opportunity to speak and uh, he nods to uh, our group from uh, the Growing Shadows. So, uh, yeah. If, depending on who here would like to speak or whatever. Doug just kind of like takes her hat, lowers it on her head a little bit. <laughs> Kyo's, Kyo's not here to, to just jump in and start running, like our, running her our mouth. Our face is not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a face when we need her. Uh, <clears throat> Jeez, where do we even start? Um, well, um, your your initiation, your first test to become full fledged members of of you know your schools was during the forming of what has now become the Serpent War, was it not? Yes. Uh, yes. What were some of the things that you saw? I had seen uh, one of the others, uh, Koga, one of the boiling serpent, recoiling serpents, with Onimaru. It threatened me when I did not choose a clan. It threatened my life if they ever encountered me outside of Denketsu. And did you ever encounter them? Yes. Oh, buddy. It was real awkward. Yes, we encountered them going through what I believe were the old grounds of uh, Ronto's clan. Mm -hmm. And where was that? Looking for money. We all failed geography. Give us a second. Um, to be fair, I failed I most mean, of my ninja right. and 13. We didn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. But it, I can't remember the names of anything. But essentially, you we... went to the 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 village that was the the home village once of the Pack of the Black Moon. Yeah, I do believe. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said. 
and you ran there. We ran into Koga there. He was drugged and awaiting a battalion of Imperial troops. And the, the real scary guy that had no arms, the cannibal, that's what his name was. He, he had arms, he was restrained. Oh, oh man, I was trying so hard to forget him. He it's probably didn't so have arms after he, he blew up. He doesn't have arms anymore. Yeah, he blew Yeah, up. he doesn't have much of anything right now. That was not my fault. It was awesome. Yes, it appears that Koga was drugged in order to give information to the Empire on the location of Denketsu. Luckily, we were able to show up, apprehend him, and bring him back, <clears throat> while at the same time routing the Imperial troops who came to meet with him. There was something else, though, that you came across there, though, correct? A large skin? Yes. There's skin a snake skin. A giant serpent. According to the heads of the recoiling serpents, Onimaru has mastered the ways of taming the great serpents yet again, and is using the, the, the large serpents from the spirit world to enter over and join with them in combat. In fact, we believe that that is what allowed him to escape their province. Currently, with Onimaro and half the recoiling serpents gone, and the entirety of the province now surrounded by the Emperor's troops under Crown Prince Kano, it is our belief that the province will soon fall. And there is a murmur throughout the crowd with that. <laughs> if you're saying they're using celestial serpents, then shouldn't we? That's you can ask nicely first. Interesting point to make. At the we very least, talk to celestial nicely. cats too. They would have been perfect. Some well, of those celestial beings have not been super jive to be to have been made involved. Um, so they could be convinced. What is it that yeah. you saw, Ronto? Maybe you oh. should explain that. Yeah, In fact, I believe that, uh, Takumi, you have something? Yeah, talk oh, to Oh, I was, I was, like, we, we, uh, prior to coming back, we, uh, we were in Arashi port, um, and got, um, uh, taken to the spirit realm by a giant panda, uh, mm -hmm. who, uh, doesn't really want to get involved with us at all. Um, uh, and, uh, we, uh, had to, uh, we, we met the cat ruler, I guess you could call her. Her name was uh, Kazuhiko. Kazuhiko, She was a cat lady. Yeah, uh, and she told us to put her brother in his place. And we did. What do you mean? Do you had to, like... What? Uh, we or something? we we ended up uh, booping his snoot and then throwing him through a tree at one point. Yes, we did that. Yeah, you can you can pet. sling them by their tails. Just like a side note, you can do that, and they'll go far. <laughs> well, that said, so. What all did you see in this location? Mm. Uh. Well, our realm was ab abandoned and salted over and kind of weathered down. There weren't really people left over, but um, again, the panda brought us into like this big, open, lively place where these dudes are kind of just chilling and living their lives. It was pretty cool. Don't really want to get involved, though. And I'm, I'm not sure that this lady's form of convincing is, um, 
the right way to go about it, if I may speak so freely. Everyone's got an opinion. Excuse me, well, guys. That said, what I actually meant was that you actually ran into one of the members of oh. the People's Rebellion there, correct? Yeah, Shuji was there too. That's, yeah, mm. I miss Kyo already. There, so this group, and uh, Ajume Abe basically says, was sent out to investigate who we believe that one of the members present during the meeting of the you know, this forming of the People's Rebellion were responsible for the poisoning of Sakamoto Eko. And they investigated. And it was decided that, uh, well, specifically they found that it was uh, Igarashi Juro was responsible for the poison. The one of the members of the ruling families, uh, Heyman Mu, which now, and he looks over at the leaders of the uh, virtuous bodyguarders, which I believe is now fallen and no longer able to be used as a mining colony, correct? And they all nod. So, we now have with us one of the members of this forming rebellion. We have an alliance getting started. But what I have brought all these people together to present is the reality of something that I don't know if everybody heard or paid attention to. We are Danketsu is being sold out. We are on the verge of a precipice, it seems, because Onimaru's fangs are trading us. They're trading Danketsu to the Empire. It seems like this is something that he's been planning for quite some time. Every step of it has come together in such a way that now we are just beginning to catch up. We know that his people have gone to the mountains in the northern region. But we don't know much more than that. What we find ourselves at now is this reality. And that's what I wish to present to all of the Lotus Coalition. Dan Ketsu is under threat. Direct threat. Most recently, these students, from what they tell me, were attacked both by a member of the Enlightened and members of Onimaru's Fangs together, working. It's quite frankly likely that they have already joined the Empire in some fashion. And yet, Onimaru is very, very misleading with his actions, especially if he has struck out against the Empire equally as much as he has with us. Which, of course, falls in line with his ideals that they wish to become as the, as the serpents of old. So now it comes to the point. What is to be done with Dan Ketsu? If I may speak. We move. Some place to fall I, back. I, underst I understand that this is not an easy task. But if Onimaru does not know where we are, Onimaru cannot sell us out. And we'll have a bit to answer for. My. That is my recommendation, but obviously this is a recommendation that must sit before the entire coalition. Moving all of us is far easier said than done. Very true. There are many families here. I, I mean, a caravan is essentially what we would become between point A and point B. And where would you suggest that we would move? I, I mean, we're basically, we're a herd of deer if, we're, if we move. We'd have to scout out a new home. Mm -hmm. And personally, I think Splitting up is probably the safest thing to do. 
you have to. Otherwise, you're nothing but a target. Well, if they split up in here, just lots more vulnerable targets. Plenty of ways to get to a place. Yeah, but How many people are in Denketsu? Hundreds of families. And not all of them are ninja, correct? That is correct. Uh, we have allies here as well as families who have lived here as long as the village has been here. We can't abandon the people. They'll be slaughtered if we leave, if just the ninja leaves. There is always the bloodier option of finding Onimaru and raining hellfire upon him. And all of those who betrayed us. It's what they deserve. This kid talks sense. Well, plan? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a plan. The... The forming rebellion beneath Sakamoto Eiko has also presented us with an option. There is an intent to take a fortified city. Sensumon has already formed essentially the, the majority of the people there after what the Empire has done will easily join a rebellion. Different factions are already starting to come together under these different leaders for this rebellion. And they wish us to converge on one place. Where the location that they have offered up for an alliance, for a united battle, is an attack on Hotoru no Koji, the Firefly's trail. Pretty close. That's uh, one benefit. It is. It's also the ancestral home. We've also, uh, with enough people, with the allies that we have, I offer, I will offer a plan, but at the same time, this will be a major strike to the Empire because this is also the ancestral home of the Golden Lions. And uh, reminding all my players uh, and listeners, the Golden Lions are one of the ninja clans that has joined the Empire. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ow. they can, can mold key. We have we have done battle with them. <laughs> yeah, uh, it I was mean, that is precisely what we did. Yeah. Gunrio says, "To hell with the Golden Lions. They're not a part of our alliance. To hell with their ancestral homelands." You're here. Yeah. yeah. Mess them up. It also puts the, if we move there, is my recommendation. If we move to that location, it also puts our backs to the land of five lakes. And whose land is that again? It's a nation to our southwest, and he says this for everyone. A nation to our southwest. Named such, perhaps because there are five of the greatest sword masters that have ever lived still there. But they are no friends of the Empire. Technically no friends of ours either. It is quite frankly possible that they will remain neutral when this happens. Well, I guess neutral's better than enemy. If this is a concern, why don't we send an envoy to ensure their neutrality, at the very least? We could characterize an attack on us as a threat to them, the Imperial Army moving down south towards them. There is one last point that I wish to bring up, and that is the Empire is seeking out new allies in this battle. I believe that this last group, do you also... 
observed that the uh, the Empire was arranging a marriage with a nearby leader, or at least part of the leadership of one of the nations, yes? Correct. Yes. We were attempting to marry away Tomoe Yamada to a prince of the land of crashing waves. On, on our way to Arashi port, we encountered her and fought off some of their pirates. You children certainly get around. It's been a yeah. trip. Yeah, we've been busy. What have you been doing? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that came from. I'm feeling a little funky today. Kumi is just generally nervous around leadership, and every other word that comes out of his friend's mouth makes him sink sir, further into his chair. I mean, yeah, Ronto's not yeah. good at talking, and when she does, she usually kind of just says something a little insulting. I've learned. Akami, Akami does have like a rifle slung over her shoulder, and you know she just looks at you, Ronto. <laughs> Tanosuke Cause... goes and sits down with the young ones and starts pouring each of them a cup of sake. That's not. That's not legal. Just a, here. just a little tough. <laughs> just a little tough in front of you. Not legal. You can, you can drink if you can sit. <laughs> As long as you can stay up. <laughs> that is. I also suggest that outside of this attack that is proposed on Hataro no Koji, there is now a desire that if the Empire is going to seek out allies beyond the borders, it is becoming necessary for us to do as well. And with that. Yamada-san has offered to be an envoy to the land of Crash Waves. And a uh, young girl that you had saved on the road uh, that had talked to you steps forward. Before, it was, she says, a choice of my family to send me off for something I was not a part of. But this is my choice to go and to help you. That was mine saying that? Uh, no, this is, uh, uh, what was her name? Yamada. Yamada Samoy. Yep, uh, Samoy. Oh. She's the girl who's part of our love triangle. Haven't you been keeping up with the soap opera Growing Shadows every yeah. other Thursday? <laughs> As the shuriken wow. turns. Wow, wow. Just, just, just calling out. Just calling people out. <laughs> yeah, this is why Kyo's not there. Kyo doesn't want to be reminded of the love triangle. So, Tomoe, are you... Are you going there and actually going through with this arranged marriage? Hopefully not, she says. So you're just gonna try to, like, sneak in and... I'm going on behalf of the People's Rebellion, she says. Ah. Who's going with you? So you're not getting married, but you're still going? She nods. Okay. But so at this point, it will come down to the vote of the coalition for the attack on Hotaro no Koji and to move the troops there and these people and to seek out new allies. But this also brings up one last point, and that is a new battle line. With the fall of the Triumph province about to happen, just because the majority of the Emperor's army is on their you know, on their borders. The Serpents are also talking about now coming south in full to join us. I 
Duplicitous. Duplicitous. They're with the Empire. Or at least they're using the leverage of the Empire to gain themselves power. The problem is, is that we know Onimaru and the rest of the clan have split. Nearly in half. We don't know who our allies are or who our enemies are. And he, oh. he kind of, uh, he apologizes. Uh, give, he gives you kind of an apologetic look when he says that. Uh, for your ca character count. Yes, Onimaru has betrayed the recoiling serpents just as much as he's betrayed the rest of the ninjas. Didn't, uh, didn't you say, I, I, I thought looking at Chetswa, didn't you say that you, f you ran into a member of Onimaru's fangs? Yes. Another child. Koga, was it? He traveled with us briefly, and I was glad to be rid of him when he left. Yeah, they don't get along. Mm, well. He betrayed us. And has made no steps towards reconciliation. Uh, I understand. Of course, we don't get along. I understand Bill your your <laughs> the feelings that you have, but he could be very useful in telling us who might be one of Onimaru's fangs and who is not. Where is he now? We separated on our way to Arashi Port. He said he was coming back to Denketsu, but as far as I know, he's still a traitor. And we can't trust him. Hajime Abe, where have you have you received word of this boy? We believe that he is currently in the Triumph Province, helping the serpent there with the war effort. Is there any way to get word from him to see if he can give us a list of serpents that might be give us some sort of intel he's the only of Onimaru's fangs that we know of that we have it's a good idea but this is the evidence that I have is there anything anyone wishes to add or will we let the eldest decide I have uh, something to say I've listened to all of the evidence here compelling to move to uh, the Tori no Koji. Uh, however, if we lose the Triumph province, that essentially cuts all of our southern territory off from the north. We won't have access, we won't be able to move troops. It makes no sense to settle yet another village here or even in the next province over. I, of course, would suggest that we move it to the Silk Belt province. Otherwise, our supply chains will be severely, severely uh, cut off. The other word, diminished. There it is, diminished. I said it very, <laughs> like, lots of <laughs> character. Um, <laughs> 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 It's an interesting a... point to make. Oh, sorry, please. No, no, no. Please. Go ahead. No, that's... Tenokiba is within the Silk Belt province, and that is where Tetsuya, who is one of the now leaders of the People's Rebellion, he is there. That might play to our benefit as well. Sorry, kind of out of character. Did the Growing Shadows Ninja mention that the Pack of the Black Moon, that their whole village was wiped out and they're all dead? I did say former home of the Pack of the Black Moon. Okay. Yeah, it, it's actually that that's something that happened in the uh, base book. Oh, okay. That's, a, that's in uh, okay, the Ninja that's Crusade old. main book. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, that, I that's what I. If that was accurate or not. Yeah, I thought it was something like that. It's so like, I thought everybody knew already. <laughs> I mean, they, yeah, that could just be... I just remember that we found the snakeskin there, and I couldn't remember if it was indicating that that was kind of a... Something else had happened there more recently. But mm. you're Where right. 
Yeah, so uh, essentially where the village was itself was not generally known. That it fell was known. There are villages of the various ninja clan that are scattered everywhere, such as uh, the one that you found that was the uh, the one for the virtuous bodyguarders that was in a... Uh, it was in a... Under a lake. Depth. Yeah, it, but it was in a forest of this <coughs> depth was the way it was described. So... Uh, yeah. Also, uh, ghosts are real. We saw ghosts. We yeah, did learn they're... that their spirits are still there. <laughs> they're real, 100%. We all really saw them, We sure. and we're... Sure. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> really upset about the snake coming out of the ground in their village. Yeah, they're Less... wicked upset about it, and they're kind of just stuck there. You guys are really, like, glossing over the fact that there is life after death. And I feel like that's much more mind blowing than giant snakes existing. Come on, Chet, focus one thing at a time. Oh. <laughs> what what I will also offer uh, is on my way here, I stopped at the Junichi Library. Uh, that is well known to myself, not a song, uh, as it is part of our clan. This library holds several prophecies of some of our elders in our, of our clan, and uh, the fall of Denketsu had actually been prophesized uh, before it even was a thing. Uh, there has already been land set aside in the Silk Belt province. If we were to resettle there, it would be very easy to resettle that land if we can get everyone there. Of course, going through the Triumph Province, who that is being, you know, uh, dominated by the Empire, that would be the tough part. It would be tough to move that many people. But, at least most of us in this room are ninja. And that shouldn't be that difficult. Except that going by land takes us essentially right past Daiwa. We would be punching a hole, as it were, if we went by land through the prince's troops. Why don't we send some of the uh, not as ninja folk by sea? Better yet, why don't we put the not as ninja folk on boats and then have people ninja on land create a distraction away from the shore so that they're out of place only, the only problem I could see with that is there being empire ships in the water near the near their border oh, the which empire takes us has so many ships truth and there is one navy that does rival this Texas the land of crashing waves. On I that see. subject, <laughs> if a team has not been set to escort Tome away, I volunteer myself to go. Here we go. I have. She is a family friend from our younger days. I you feel say as a wise as a wise 14 year old <laughs> as a wise 14 year old let me fall on my sword this is a very pointy love triangle I've, have... I've been waiting there... for guy to perk up since uh since Aloy mentioned a library yeah <laughs> the, the thing is the thing is is that if you imagine it if you look in the background of all of these scenes uh guy is just knee shuffling ever closer closer and closer to Lloyd's character right <laughs> all the while Teach just me all you know right so that's all a guy is focused on well and and I, I just out of character it should be noted that like he's Genryo is not like your average hidden strand like no hidden strand is even going to mention that library to anyone that's not in the clan so but he doesn't give a crap that's kind of that's kind of his thing yeah so what are you going <laughs> to do He'll, oh, he'll this tell is you top about the library. Oh. Yeah. 
He'll tell you about the library and then go stand in front of it and just be like, you want to get in? Go through me. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am the price of admission. <laughs> well, it looks like we will need to send some missiles then to the People's Rebellion and figure this all out. What is our timeline in terms of needing to desert Danketsu? As long as the servants can hold out and keep the Empire's army busy, they can't march on us. But I do recommend getting all non-essential people out of here as soon as possible. Which also... Not being able to send the army, by the way, doesn't mean that they won't send scouts. Very true. Which also brings up the point of a border that we have not dared cross. And that is the land of Seed and Blossom. Bit of a hot zone, if I remember things correctly, yeah? I would much rather go to the land of five blades. Indeed. The Blossom people are... ...degenerates. Whoa! <laughs> Oh, not those blossoms. <laughs> Sorry. But the question is, should we seek an alliance with them? After all, they are under imperial occupation right now as well. Would they like Would they to, want be to be out of it? And Akami looks at Ronto and is like, oh, you have redeemed yourself. Yes. Wouldn't they, yeah. wouldn't they like to be... Uh, maybe have some aid in removing the Empire stain from their borders. Emboldened by that one cup of sake, she just kind of leans back, nods her heads, and kind of looks at you. Just And I clean my glasses. <laughs> I'm going to die, I'm going to die. We're all going to die, Taka. Oh chat, God. shut up. <laughs> There's life after when death. What is wrong with you burn. today? <laughs> there is up, life chat. after death. There's an audience. He's <laughs> usually a little less weird. I'm trying to be uh, formal and professional, and you guys are just ruining my vibe right now. You Your vibe. Exactly what he'd say to just... Your vibe just makes me feel uncomfortable, to be perfectly I... honest. To be fair. Really... I really it didn't a... appreciate your vibe at the Applebee's today. God dang it, you know that's one of my favorite things I've ever heard. <laughs> Scus just smiles and pours them some more sake. For those of you who are joining us, uh, there is an early joke in the first season that there's an Applebee's everywhere, therefore there is an Applebee's in Dan Ketz. Amen. That's yeah. right. There's also a Chili's um, in the place Because they need a lesser hope. competitor. In that, in that one, uh... Two chilies, because there's always oh, okay. two. There's the good one and the one that's not so good. Ah. Uh... Yeah, there, it was that uh, ramshackle, like, wharf town. It's in my notes. Yeah, the chilies. On a boat, because that wharf town was all made of boats. Yeah. Yep. A traveling chilies. Well, uh... this is something for us to allow the elders to present, then. And to think over. The problem with sending any of our aid to the land of Seed and Blossom is that we are already in a losing position and we would yet send more of our troops to another land. That would make it even harder for us to protect our people if we were moving to a new location. Truth, but sending an ambassador of some sort. You're right, I will go. <laughs> Can I come with you? Sorry, I just had to laugh because he's the worst one to go, but he's gonna vol he would volunteer. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I think this guy might be my hero. <laughs> yeah, you. Do you want to join us? <laughs> you two should go and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it becomes a buddy cop show. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Batman Robin world are we living in? Yeah, there we go. We yeah. already know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Can get our own HBO Max series. Hey, it's easy to get one of those. Yeah. Uh, it certainly go. seems like it. <laughs> <laughs> Done with it. 
Well, that said, Hajime Abe allows everyone to present uh, other findings, other points. But these are the main points that are driven home throughout the rest of the movie. Uh, obviously, this is going to boil down to decisions that our characters would not make. Uh, but, that said, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start to close down the roleplay here for the moment. Uh, because this is where we're at. This is the story that we're presented. I wanted to build up an idea that there's now a people's rebellion forming. Uh, that it is being uh, noble-backed because that would be something that, for some people, would mean something, especially if it came from a bloodline. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's so much to work with with the book. And uh, obviously, I, I do want to say, Elo Eloy, thank you so much for coming on the show because you are the creator thereof. And at the same time, sorry, because, you know, it, it, I... <sighs> This is my vision of what's happening, and this is obviously not a penultimate vision for anybody. Uh, because, it, I, you know, whenever this all ends, I could do, I could see starting this all over again and maybe going a different direction with the Ninja Crusade. Yeah. Uh, but the beauty of an RPG. If you're apologizing for destroying Denketsu, uh, it was tenuous at best. Like, honestly, like <laughs> all of these people living together and they all kind of hate each other, it was bound to not go well. Uh, so. That was an Applebee's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, no, that was the first strike. Is that the Applebee's closed down in Denketsu, and it was like, wait, what? That's all we had. That's all. That was the yeah. best thing. That's the only <laughs> thing that brought us together. I swear it was arson. <laughs> and then, and, and then appetizer got... happy hour was when things were best. <laughs> things got real housewives real fast. I miss my cinnamon apples. Ah. Uh. But, but yeah. uh yeah, so we're gonna be starting back up in just over uh two months when this broadcasts. And uh we're gonna be going into season three. And I'm gonna be putting this out there that uh we're having actually a time jump. The events that we have talked about on this show uh will take place and uh won't be the main linchpin of what's coming. And be backstory. Yes, uh, we're, we're we are currently the the prologue of the next step, and so uh, coming up for season three, you'll just have to wait and see what exactly the elders chose and uh, oh. where we find ourselves. But I will say this: expect our teenagers to be a little bit older. I'm so intrigued as go. they grow, as as humans do, as humans do. Sorry, Shadow. Ready for this?